Hi, in this video I am going to do complete revision on magnetic field uh, mainly focused on Edexcel IAL Unit 4 syllabus. Okay, so firstly you should know the definition of magnetic field that appears in the past paper several times. So what's the definition of magnetic field? How do we define magnetic field? This is the way we define magnetic field. Read where a moving charge particle or current carrying wire experiences magnetic force is defined as magnetic field. Again, I'm telling it. Region where a moving charge particle or current carrying wire experiences magnetic force is defined as magnetic field. Uh, magnetic field has direction actually. Uh, the strength of the magnetic field is called magnetic field strength or magnetic flux density. That definition I will let you know later. But magnetic field can be shown by field lines, magnetic field lines. Uh, they have direction. How do we define the direction of the magnetic field lines? From north to south, always magnetic field lines come, uh, come out of north pole and move towards south pole. So experimentally, how do we see or how do, how do we detect the direction of magnetic field uh, by using a plotting compass? Keep a plotting compass at a point. The direction, the needle of the plotting compass indicates is the direction of the magnetic field at that point or in that smaller region. You would have learned that in IGCSA. Okay, so you should know the properties of the magnetic field lines. The first property Magnetic field lines always come out of North Pole and move towards South Pole, the first property. Second property, magnetic field lines never cross each other. Third property, the number of lines per unit area indicates the strength of the magnetic field in that region. If the number of lines per unit area, that is field density, or is higher, that means the strength of the field in that region is higher. So you should know the properties of the magnetic field lines. Okay, so you should know my electromagnet you that learn in uh, IGCC also, you know, moving charge particle creates electromagnetic field around them. Moving charge particle creates magnetic field around them. Current flow means rate of flow of charge. So when current flows in a conductor, or wherever it's semiconductor, whatever it is, when current flows, there will be magnetic field around it. This is called electromagnet. When current flows, there will be magnetic field around it and this is called electromagnet. So when current flows in a wire, there will be magnetic field around the wire. So we can find the direction of the magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire or current carrying conductor by using right hand grip rule for field. Okay, so as I told now, the direction of the magnetic field around a current carrying wire could be found by using right hand grip rule for field. Okay, how do we use that? Keep the right hand like this and when thumb indicates the direction of the current, all other four fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So when current flows in a wire, the magnetic field will be produced as concentric circles around it. For example, if current flows into the board, so cross indicates into the board, or you can write it on a notebook into the page, here into the board. So the current is flowing into the board. What could be the shape of the magnetic field produced by this current around the wire? It will be concentric circles. So how to find the direction of the magnetic field? Use the right hand. So keep the right hand like this. Thumb indicates the direction of the current, so it indicates into the page. All of the fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So the shape of the magnetic field will be circles like this, concentric circles. So the direction of the magnetic field will be clockwise, will be clockwise. If the current is flowing out of the page or out of the board, so that will be denoted by I, that also will produce magnetic field concentric circles around the 
wire. So the direction of the magnetic field, keep the right hand, it points out of the board because current is flowing out of the board. So all of the fingers will curl in this direction. So the direction of the magnetic field will be anti-clockwise. Same way, when there's a wire that carries current upward direction on the board, so the direction of the magnetic field will be concentric circles around this wire. So on the right side of the wire, the direction of the magnetic field will be into the page, into the board. So I can put the magnetic field with cross. Cross indicates the direction into the board. Magnetic field is denoted by capital B, so B. Same way, what's the direction of the magnetic field on the left side of the wire? You can see, keep the thumb along the direction of current flow. So, magnetic field will come out of the board. So, that will be denoted by dot and circle. You can put that is dot and circle because it's coming out of the board on the left side of the wire and on the right side of the wire it's going into the board. It will be concentric circles like this. Okay, so what is solenoid? A current carrying wire with many turns is called solenoid. So when current flows in a solenoid, there will be magnetic field around it. The shape of the magnetic field produced by a current carrying solenoid is similar to the magnetic field produced by a bar magnet. That means when current flows in a solenoid, the magnetic field produced around it will have this almost the same shape as the magnetic field produced by a bar magnet. So one end of the current carrying solenoid will become north pole and the other end will become south pole. We know magnetic field always comes out of north pole and move to the south pole. Okay, so here how to find which end is the north pole, which end will become south pole when the solenoid carries current. For that we use right hand grip rule for poles. Okay, so for that same way, as I said earlier, right hand grip proof of field, the same way, keep the right hand like this. But here, the four fingers indicate the direction of the current, then thumb will indicate the north pole. So, for example, here, the solid lines are showing the, la, the part which is closer to you. The dotted lines indicates the part of the solenoid away from you. So current is flowing in this direction, upward direction on the solenoid, which is closer to you on that side. So keep the right hand like this. So the arrow of the direction of the current is upward. So four fingers should fall in that direction. Thumb indicates this way. That means the thumb indicates the north pole. This end will become north pole. So the left end will become north pole. <coughs> And the other end, the right end, will become south pole. Keep the right hand like this. The four fingers indicate the direction of the current on the solenoid. Then the thumb will indicate the north pole. So the magnetic field lines produced by the current flowing in the solenoid will make left end north pole, right end south pole. So the direction of the magnetic field is similar to the direction of the, sorry, the shape of the magnetic field is similar to the shape of the magnetic field produced by a solid uh, bar magnet. So here also the field lines will be like this. This is north pole, so come at, comes out, and this is south pole, so it will be like this. So this is the shape of the magnetic field produced by current carry solenoid. If the current is flowing other way, if the current, the direction of the current is the other way. So if the current flows this direction, then keep the right hand like this. The thumb will indicate that direction. So this will be the north pole and this will be the south pole. Here also the field lines will same shape, they'll come out this way. 
So this will be the North Pole. So three lines will come out and end here. The difference between the the field lines pattern we when we compare uh, bar magnet and solenoid in bar magnet we don't show the field lines inside the magnet but in solenoid we show the field lines inside the solenoid so inside the solenoid we can imagine the field lines are almost parallel and equally spaced so that means inside the solenoid almost a constant field lines or constant strength of the field is produced okay so as we learned just now when current flows in a wire it produces circular magnetic field lines we can find the direction by using right hand grip rule for field. So also in the properties, uh, we say the magnetic field lines come out of North Pole and move towards South Pole. So when the magnetic field lines are concentric circles, how to identify the North and South Poles in that field line? So how to identify the North and South? Okay, so the North and South are relative. For example, if I uh, we consider three different points on the outer field line, say this is X, this is point Y, and this is point Z. Okay, when I come when I consider the points X and Y, there the field line is coming out of X and moving towards Y. So I can say the point X is north relative to Y and y is south related to x because the field lines coming from x to y so relative to y the field line is coming out of x so related to y x is north pole related to x at y the field line is entering into point y so related to x the point y is south now when i consider y and z what happens the field lines is coming out of Y and moving towards Z. So they are relative to relative to Y. Z is south because it's moving towards Z. So this is south. But related to Z, the point Y is north because field line is coming out of Y. So the north and south poles here depends on the two points we consider. So the same point Y could be north if we consider Y and Z. The same point Y could be south when I consider Y and X. Okay, so next is about force on a current carrying wire when it is kept in magnetic field, yes. When a current carrying wire is kept in magnetic field, the magnetic uh, the wire will experience magnetic force. The reason is, you know, current carrying wire also will produce magnetic field. So if there is external magnetic field from some other magnetic source, both magnetic field will interact with each other and there will be force on the current carrying wire. So how to find the direction of the force acting on current carrying wire? We find the direction of current carrying wire by using Fleming's left hand roll. Okay, what Fleming's left hand roll says, keep the left hand, the first finger, the in, uh, we can say like thumb, index finger and the second finger, thumb, index finger and the second finger. Keep all these three in right angle to each other. When the index finger indicates the direction of the magnetic field and the second finger indicates the direction of the current, then thumb will indicate the direction of the force on the current carrying wire. Again, I'm saying Fleming's left hand rule says that keep the thumb, index finger and the second finger in right angle to each other. When the index finger indicates the direction of the magnetic field and the second finger indicates the direction of the current, 
then thumb will indicate the direction of the magnetic force acting on the current carrying wire. So based on that, we'll do a few examples. You know, magnetic field is a vector or the magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field is vector. Still, I did not de uh, define <coughs> the magnetic field strength, but it is a vector quantity. Okay, so according to this rule, we'll check a few examples. For example, uh, first I can say, if the current flow this way and the direction of the magnetic field is towards right, what could be the direction of the force on the current carrying wire? Use the Fleming's left hand rule. Keep the thumb, index finger indicates the direction of the magnetic field. Second finger indicates the direction of the current. So the magnetic force on the current carrying wire will be into the board or into the page. So direction of the magnetic force into the page, I can say cross and F. The second example, the direction of the current is downwards. Magnetic field is acting into the page. So I can put cross. The magnetic field is acting into the page. So some external magnetic field is acting into the page. What will be the direction of the force acting on the current carrying wire? Again, use the Fleming's left hand rule. So magnetic field is into the page. So keep the, uh, in the index finger into the page. Current flow is downward, downwards. So the thumb is indicate that towards right. So the time thumb is pointing towards right. So the direction of the magnetic force on the wire is towards right. Third example. So current carrying wire is into the page. Current is flowing into the page. And the magnetic field lines are towards upwards. Field lines are upwards. What will be the direction of the force on this wire which is carrying current into the page? Okay, use Fleming's left hand rule, Matty field, the index finger indicates upwards. Current is into the board, so into the page. So thumb is pointing to the right. So the magnetic force is towards right. Fourth example, current carrying wire is at an angle. The magnetic field lines are towards right. Okay, what will be the direction of the Okay, the fourth example, we'll do this one and then we'll go to the angle. So where the, imagine like this, the current carrying wire is carrying current towards right. The field lines are parallel, same direction or opposite direction, doesn't matter, but field lines are also parallel to the direction of current flow, whether in the same direction or opposite direction, whatever it is, but field lines are parallel to the direction of current flow. So here you can't use the Fleming's left hand rule because they should be in right angle. The direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field should be right angle to each other. Since they are parallel, the only answer is no force. There is no force on the wire. <coughs> and the fifth example, the last example, there I can say current carrying wire makes an angle with magnetic field lines. So the magnetic field lines make an angle theta with the direction of the current. Okay, so here what can we do? We can resolve the magnetic field into two right angle components. One component along the direction of current flow and the other one perpendicular to the current flow. So I can consider the current same as earlier. The magnetic field which is along the direction of current flow will have a component B cos theta because magnetic field strength is a vector quantity. Still, I did not define the 
magnetic field strength, I'll define it, but should know the magnetic field strength is a vector quantity. So the component parallel to the field lines is B cos theta, and the component of the field lines perpendicular to the current carrying wire, that is B sin theta. We know that if the magnetic field lines parallel to the field line, sorry, magnetic field lines parallel to the current flow, there won't be any force. I already explained here. So this compound of magnetic field will not produce any force on the current carrying wire. So force on the current carrying wire is due to the compound of the magnetic field which is perpendicular to the direction of current. Now use the Fleming's left hand rule. Magnetic field is this direction. I'm using this one, this direction. Current is this way. The force will be into the board. The direction of the force acting on the wire will be into the board. Okay, so this diagram setup shows how to relate the magnetic force on a current carrying wire with other quantities such as magnetic field strength, uh, then the magnitude of the current and length of the wire inside the material. How to relate these quantities uh, with magnetic force on a current carrying wire. So here first, uh, keep the current, uh, switch off the current flow in the wire. This is the wire. The wire is not touching any part of the yoke or not touching a magnet or anything. It's clamped separately. So first, uh, switch off the current flow in the wire. York is the stand which consists of two magnetor magnets. These are the magnetor magnets. So the advantage of magnetor magnet compared to bar magnet is uh, magnetor, magnetor magnet produces strong uniform magnetic field. So this is the north pole of a uh, magnetor magnet and here this is the south pole of a magnetor magnet. So inside the York opposite faces are carrying opposite poles of the magnetic magnets. So magnetic field will be from north to south. The green color lines indicates that. <clears throat> okay, so when you keep the yoke on the digital balance, first the balance will read the total weight of the yoke and the magnetic magnets. If you have reset button on the weighing scale, press it and bring the reading to zero. So the, now the reading is zero. Right? When you switch on the circuit, if the current flows as shown here, this way if the current flows, the current carrying wire is kept inside magnetic field of the magnetor magnets. Magnetor magnets are attached to the yoke of yoke. So what will happen? The current carrying wire will experience magnetic force according to Fleming's left hand rule. You can see the magnetic field lines are from north to south and the current is from here to here. So the force on the current carrying wire will be upward direction. So this wire will experience magnetic force upward direction. According to Newton's third law, magnetor magnets, those are fixed to the yolk, will experience the same magnitude of force downward direction. So the magnetor magnets will be pushed downwards. The magnetor magnets are glued or fixed to the yoke, so the yoke will push the weighing scale down. Again, I'm saying, when circuit is switched on, current is flowing this direction, magnetic field from north to south, so use the Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic field from north to south, current is flowing this direction, so the force on the current carrying wire will be upward direction. This force is due to the magnetic field produced by the magnetor magnets. So according to Newton's third law, the magnetor magnets will experience magnetic force downward direction and the yoke will push the weighing scale downwards with the same magnitude of force. So the reading on the weighing scale will give the force acting on the current carrying wire. Okay, so reading of the weighing scale gives the force acting on the current carrying wire. If the direction of current is reversed, if the direction of the current is reversed, what will happen? Uh, first you keep the yoke switch on the, before switching on the current flow, the weighing scale will read 
the total weight of the yolk and the matador matrix. When you switch on the current flow and if the current is flowing opposite direction, not like what I showed here, if the current is flowing in opposite direction like this, the current flows in opposite direction like this way, what will happen? The matter magnets produce magnetic field from north to south. The current flow is this direction. So force on the current carrying wire will be downward direction. Force on the current carrying wire will be downward direction. So force on the York and the magnetor magnet will be upward direction. So before you switch on the circuit, the digital balance reads the total weight of the York and magnetor magnets. Now the force acting on the York or the force acting on the magnetor magnet is upward direction. The third law pair of the force on the wire which is acting on the magnetor magnet upward direction. So the reading of the weighing scale will decrease. The amount of reduction or amount of drop in the reading is equal to force uh, on the current carrying wire. Based on that, there was a question in the past paper. Uh, I'll discuss it today. That question also I'll discuss it. Uh, that is uh, on uh, uh, question June 2017 paper. Uh, there's a question. Yes, I'll discuss after this one explaining the theory. Okay, so here I take the current flow as I said earlier to the left. So the current is flowing this direction. So if the current is flowing this way, the reading of the weighing scale will increase. The amount of increase in the reading is equal to force acting on the wire. So we can do the practical like this. By keeping uh, the length of the wire inside the magnetic field constant and the field lines are perpendicular to the Magnetor magnets, face of the magnetic magnetor magnet. So the wire should be kept parallel to the face of the magnetor magnet. Means the magnetic field lines will be perpendicular to the direction of current flow. If you vary the current, and for each current, record the force acting on the wire by using the weighing scale, and plot a graph force against current flow. So if you plot a graph of force against current flow, you will get a straight line through the origin. So that means force acting on the wire is directly proportional to the current flow. Now if we change the next experiment, by keeping the current flow fixed, change the length of the wire inside the magnetic field. So that's practically a bit difficult, so we had to use different number of pair of magnetor magnets and York. So if you change the length of the magnet, uh, length of the current carrying wire inside the magnetic field by keeping the current flow constant and if you plot a graph of force against length of the uh, wire inside the magnetic field, there also you will get a straight line through the origin. From that we can say force is directly proportional to length. Third one, by keeping the length of the wire inside the magnetic field fixed, change the strength of the magnetic field. So far I didn't define the strength of the magnetic field, but I'm going to define it by using the equation what I'm getting here. So change the strength of the magnetic field. Normally we obtain different strength of magnetic field by using Helmholtz coil, but we don't deal much in your syllabus. So anyway, you don't need this particular experiment much about it. So if you plot a graph of force against strength of the magnetic field, they are also, you'll get a straight line through the origin. When I combine all these three conclusions, I can say F proportional to B I L. So if I convert this equation, uh, this relationship into equation F equal K times B I L. Okay, from this only we define the uh, unit of magnetic field strength. How do we define the unit of the magnetic field strength? When one meter length of wire is completely inside a um, uniform magnetic field and when it carries one ampere current, the strength of the magnetic field which provides one newton force is defined as one tesla. Again, I tell that 
when one meter length of wire is completely inside magnetic field, uniform magnetic field, and when the wire carries one ampere current, the strength of the magnetic field which provides a force of one newton is defined as one tesla. So when we define this, all quantities are one, so K will become equal to one. So finally, when we use current in amperes, length of the wire inside the magnetic field in meters, magnetic field strength in Tesla and force in Newton, K will become equal to 1. So we don't need to show the K. So final equation will become F equal B I L. But this is true when the field lines are perpendicular to the direction of current flow. So when you are doing a practical, we should keep the length of the wire parallel to the face of the magnet or magnets means the field line will be perpendicular to the direction of current flow. So the equation becomes F equal B I L. If the direction of the magnetic field makes an angle theta with the direction of the current flow, we need the compound of the field lines perpendicular to the direction of current flow. So then we say F equal B sin theta, that is a component which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow, IL. So the final equation we need to remember in your syllabus, F equal V I L sine theta. Okay, so now I will discuss few past paper questions related to what we completed so far, mainly about. Uh, electromagnet and the force acting on current carrying wire. So I made a worksheet select uh, based on these uh, questions and I uh, uploaded in the Google Drive. Then <coughs> you can download the worksheet. Uh, the link for the worksheet is given in the description of this. Okay, this question appeared on October 2019. WPH04, uh, question number 8. <clears throat> a square coil of wire PQRS has sides of length x. It is in a magnetic field of magnetic flux density B as shown. The wire carries current I. The plane of the coil is at an angle theta to the magnetic field. Which of the following is equal to magnet? magnitude of the force on the side QR. Okay, so here students get confused. The plane is at an angle theta to the magnetic field, but even if the plane is at an angle theta to the field lines, the plane, you can imagine, this plane is at an angle theta to the field lines, but when you think only this side, the last side QR, that is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field, only the plane, the plane is at an angle theta, but the edge of the plane, the edge of that coil, that is QR, is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. So there are the force acting on the uh, QR is given by F equal, you know, BIL sine theta, we learned that now, theta is the angle between the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of current flow, which is 90 degree. So that is going to be, the length is, one side is X, so B I X sin 90. Sin 90 is 1, so B I X. So the correct answer is B. Correct answer for this MCQ question of question number 8, October 2019 paper is B. Okay, this question May 2019. Question number 3, May 2019, WPH 04, question number 3, <clears throat> there this diagram is given, so the direction of current flow is not given, so we can find out, so this is the positive terminals, current will flow this way, current will flow this way and flow this way. The sides are named, uh, they are named like, uh, this is XY, this side is called X and this is Y. The question is, on this diagram, the question is, 
the current is given as 0.4 ampere and the magnetic field strength in this region or the magnetic flux density is given as 0.07 tesla uh, and uh, the length of the side xy the length of the side xy is given as 5 centimeter the question is uh, which of the following gives the force on side xy in newton so we sh should tell the direction also so four answers are given including the direction so we'll see the direction first so the current is flowing this direction the magnetic field from north to south so magnetic field from north to south current is flowing out of the y to x is out of the page so force on the side xy will be upwards force on the side xy will be upwards and you know the direction of current and the direction of magnetic field lines are perpendicular so the coil is i couldn't draw exactly the same way see the paper question number three this paper so here the field lines is from north to south and the current is coming out of the page out of the board so they are perpendicular to each other so the force acting on the side xy has a direction upward direction we found it by using Fleming's left hand rule that is given by f equal b i l sine theta theta is 90 degree b is given as 0 0.07 the length 5 centimeter means 0 0.05 in meters and cur uh, sorry, current is uh, 0 0.4 amperes and the length is 0. 0, 0.5 the direction is upwards so the correct answer is a for this question correct answer mcq a okay so the next question is january 2019 wph 04 question number 4 a current carrying wire is placed perpendicular to a magnetic field of magnetic flux density that is B, 0 0.05 Tesla. The length of the wire in the field is 10 cm. The force on the wire is 2 into 10 to the minus 3 Newton. Which of the following is the current in the wire? So it's perpendicular, they are telling it. So that's very easy. We can use F equal BIL sine theta. Theta is 90 degree, force is given as 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 Newton. The field strength uh, is given as 0 0.05. The current flow is given as, uh, current is the question, sorry, current is the question. And the length of the wire inside the magnetic field is given as 10 centimeter. So 0 0.1 meters. So you need to find the current here, solve it. So that will be 0 0.4 ampere. So that we can say 4 into 10 to the power minus 1 ampere. Correct answer D. Okay, next question is October 2018, WPH 0401. Question number 7, this diagram is given. The magnetic flux density between the poles is 0 0.09 Tesla. So B is 0 0.09 Tesla. Length of the uh, wire within the magnetic field. So this length, length of the wire within the magnetic field is uh, 4.5 centimeter. And the wire is making an angle 28 degree with the north pole magnet. Okay, so with one of the magnets making north pole. So the field lines will be from north to south. We know that the field lines will be north to south. So the field line is not perpendicular to the direction of current flow. The question is, we need to find an expression for the force acting on the wire. But we know this angle, the angle made by the angle between the direction of field line and direction of current flow. Current is flowing along this line. This is perpendicular, so this is 90 degree. This angle is uh, 62 degree. And you consider this right angle triangle. 
this right angle triangle, this is 62 degree. In this right angle triangle, this is 28, this is 90 means this should be 62 degree. So the component of the magnetic field perpendicular to the length of the wire is B sin 62. B is given as 0 0.09. So the component which is perpendicular to the magnetic field is 0 0.09 sin 62. That's a component perpendicular to the direction of current flow. Okay, so the force acting on the y is given by F equal BIL sin theta. So here B sin theta, I can say B sin theta, B sin theta is 0 0.09 sin 62. So the current flow we know that 0. 0 0.09 so 0 0.09 sin 62 times current flow is given as uh, 0 0.15 amperes current is given as 0 0.515 amperes and the length inside the material 4.5 centimeter means that should be 0 0.05 so this is the force acting on the current carrying wire. The direction, we we'll use the Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic field from north to south, magnetic field from north to south, and the direction of current flow along this way. So the force will be out of the page, out of the page. So correct answer D for this question, correct answer D. Okay, next question, June 2017, WPH04. Question number 15, this diagram, so photograph is given, I drew the diagram. A student is investigating the motor effect. Motor effect means the force due to uh, current carrying wire in magnetic field. Motor effect places a wire between two magnets on a holder, as shown in the photograph, but I drew the diagram. The Arrangement is placed on a digital balance calibrated to display force. The reading on the balance is 1.476 newton. So initial reading on the balance. So initial reading on the balance is uh, 1.476 newton. When there is current of 0 0.82 ampere in the wire, the reading on the balance becomes 1.47772. So the final reading in the circuit is switched on and when there is current flow, final reading on the weighing scale is dropping. It becomes 1.4772 Newton. That's a final reading. The current flow is given as uh, 0 0.82 amperes. So, first part or A part, determine the magnetic flux density between the two magnets, length of the wire inside the magnetic field, this length inside the magnetic, so these two other magnetic magnets, length of the wire inside the magnetic field is 5 cm. Okay, so the reading is dropping, I already explained that, the reading is dropping because force on the York and the magnetor magnet is upward direction. So that's a reading. That's a reason the reading of the weighing scale is decreasing. But the amount of reduction in the weighing scale will be equal to the force acting on the current carrying wire. So here the force acting on the current carrying wire is the first, uh, first part find the magnetic flux density between the two wires. So first part I need to find the force acting on the wire is the difference between these two readings. That is 1.4776 minus 1.4772. So that's going to be uh, 0 0.004 Newton. So F equal BIL sine theta. So here the field lines are perpendicular to the direction of current flow. So theta will be 90 degree. So force I know 0 0.0004. B I need to find it. Current flow is given as 0 0.82. The length of the wire inside the magnetic field, this length is given as 5 cm, 0 0.05. And sine theta is 1. Find the B. 
So the answer will be 0 0.00976. Tesla. Okay, B part of the same question. In the arrangement shown, the direction of the current is from right to left. So from right to left means the direction of the current is this way. This is the direction of the current flow. Explain why the direction of the magnetic field is from y to x. Okay, why the magnetic field is from y to x. This is north pole and this is the south pole. Why is it like that? First, you should say, since the reading of the weighing scale decreases force on the magnet or magnet is upward direction. Therefore, the force on the current carrying wire should be downward direction force on the current carrying wire should be downward direction because force on the magnet or magnet is upward direction that's a re that's a reason the reading is decreasing so force on the magnet or magnet is upward direction and hence the force on the current carrying wire is downward direction they are third law pairs use the fleming's left hand rule so the force on the current carrying wire is downward direction i'm using the fleming's left hand rule for the current carrying this wire Force on the Y is downward direction. Current is from right to left. So use the Fleming's left hand rule. So the index finger will indicate into the page that means Y to X. So the direction of the magnetic field is from Y to X. That's the answer. You should write it. Okay, so additional to these recent past papers, there could be questions like this also. When there are two parallel long current carrying wires, they might be carrying different amount of currents, I1 and I2. The distance between the two wires is maybe they can say D. Uh, and also they can say the current produced by the sorry the strength of the magnetic field produced by a current carrying y at a distance r from it uh, is given by they can give this equation not in a syllabus b equal mu naught i over 2 pi r r is the distance of from the current carrying wire this is not in the Excel syllabus, but they can introduce this equation saying that magnetic field strength produced by a current carrying wire at distance R from it. So if there is a wire that is carrying current I at distance R from it, uh, the, the strength of the magnetic field is given by this equation. So where mu naught is a constant called permeability of free space like a uh, electric field we say epsilon uh, um, naught is perme uh, permittivity of free space this is called permeability of free space it has a numerical value 2 pi sorry 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 uh, where 2 pi is a constant if the current is constant we can say that magnetic field strength produced by a current carrying wire it's inversely proportional to the distance from it perpendicular distance from it so we can say that way so they can sometimes give the actual equation or maybe mu naught is constant 2 pi is constant uh, they can say uh, b is equal to ki over r they can say that way also anyway whatever it is i'll use the actual equation b equal mu naught i over 2 pi r sometimes they introduce this equation they can give this equation mu naught is constant, 2 pi is constant, i is the current flow, r is the distance from the perpendicular distance from the wire. So they can ask you to find an expression for the force acting on unit length of the second wire. Say so maybe I can call this wire PQ, this has RS, both are much longer parallel wires. They are carrying current in the same direction, I1 and I2. So they can ask to get an expression for the force acting on unit length of one of the wires and their direction they can ask. Okay, so in that type of questions, 
the current is flowing upwards on the wire PQ. The magnetic field produced by the current I1 on the right side, that is on the wire RS, the into the board. So that means I can say the wire RS, which is carrying current I2, is in the magnetic field of I1. Magnetic field of I1. That means the current I1 will produce magnetic field around it as concentric circles. So the magnetic field produced by I1 on the wire RS will be into the board. If I use right hand, we pull for field. So that magnetic field is given by V equal mu naught I over 2 pi D. That's a magnetic field on wire RS that is produced by current I1. Then the force acting on, so that is into the board. So the direction of the magnetic field on this RS is into the board. Okay, so the force acting on unit length of wire RS, if I use Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic field is into the board. Current carrying, direction of the current on wire RS is upward direction. So force on RS will be towards wire PQ. The force exerted by, uh, exerted on the wire RS will be towards wire PQ. So that force is given by, you know that F equal VIL sine theta. So the unit length of wire, so L should be 1. The magnetic field strength is given by mu naught I1 over 2 pi D. That's the magnetic field strength of current I1 on the wire RS. Current flow on wire RS is I2. The length 1 meter. So the force is mu naught I1 I2 over 2 pi D. That's the force acting on the wire RS on its unit length. So according to Newton's third law, the same magnitude of force will be exerted by wire RS. Current carrying wire RS will exert same magnitude of force on wire PQ according to Newton's third law. The reason this force is due to this current means the, this wire will have force due to this current. They should have the same magnitude according to Newton's third law. So the force on unit length of wire PQ also will be the same. So that also will be this way because Newton's third law says they will in opposite direction. The Newton's third law pairs will be in opposite direction. So the force on unit length of wire PQ also will have the same magnitude that force will be directed towards wire RS. So here I use the Newton's third law to state the uh, force on wire PQ. But if you want, you can use again right hand we pull for field. So I can say the wire PQ is in the magnetic field of current I2. So what's the direction of the magnetic field produced by I2 on wire PQ will be out of the page. <coughs> that will be out of the page. That magnetic field is given by B equal mu naught I2 over 2 pi D is the magnetic field produced by current I2 on wire PQ. So what's the force acting on unit length of wire PQ? BIL sin theta. So B mu naught I2 over 2 pi D current I1 and the length is 1. We are considering the force acting on unit length of wire. So you will get the same expression mu naught I1 I2 over 2 pi D because they are Newton's third law pair of forces. You will get the same expression. <coughs> So the direction of the force, I already told that Newton third law pair, but without Newton third law pair, if I use Fleming's left hand rule, the magnetic field produced by current I2 on the wire PQ is out of the page. Use Fleming's left hand rule, out of the page. Current is upward direction, so the force is towards wire RS. 
here towards via EQ. <coughs> Okay, so we learned that when there are two parallel wires carry different amounts of current, but in the same direction, the force acting on them will be attractive force. They pull each other attractive force. If the direction of current between, uh, on two parallel wires is the same, they'll have attractive force. If the current carrying wire has opposite direction of current, what will happen? This current is I1, this is I2. So here what will happen, the magnetic field produced by current I1 on the wire, I can call PQ, this is RS, longer wires. So the force, the magnetic field produced by I1 on the wire I2 will be into the board. So the direction will be into the board here. Use the Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic field into the board, current is downwards, force towards right on wire RS. So force on wire RS is towards right. So I call Newton's third law, force on PQ due to current I2 will be towards left. Or I can use right hand grip pull for field, current downwards, it will produce magnetic field on PQ into the board. You can see into the board. <coughs> so this is into the board here. Use the Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic field into the board, current is upward, force is towards left. So they are repulsive force, remember that. When current flows on two parallel wires, in the same direction, they will have attractive force. But when the current flows in opposite direction on two parallel wires, the force will be repulsive force, the magnetic force will be repulsive force, remember that. Okay, next topic is motion of charged particle in magnetic field. We know that current flow is rate of flow of charged particle. So whenever a charged particle flows, there will be current flow. Due to that current flow, there will be magnetic field around it. So when this magnetic field interacts with external magnetic field, there will be force on the moving charged particle. If the charged particle is at rest, it won't have magnetic force because it there won't be any current flow. Only when it moves relative to magnetic field. Relative to magnetic field, when a charged particle moves, there will be current flow relative to magnetic field. And when there is current flow, there will be magnetic field. And this magnetic field will interact with the external magnetic field. That will cause magnetic force on the moving charged particle. Okay, we normally take conventional direction of current flow when now positively charged particle moves the direction of the current flow due to the motion is along the direction of velocity of the particle but when a negatively charged particle moves the direction of the current flow will be opposite to the direction of velocity of the particle remember this these are the sign conventional of the current due to motion of charged particle so when a charged particle moves such that it enters into magnetic field in right angle to the field lines, uh, what will happen to the uh, charged particle? What, how will it move when it enters into magnetic field uh, in right angle to the direction of field lines? Uh, we can derive an equation for the force acting on moving charged particle by using the force acting on current carrying wire kept in magnetic field. Say for example when a current carrying wire kept in magnetic field at an angle theta to the direction of field line the force acting on the wire is given by F equal V I L sin theta. So actually this force is acting on each and every moving free electrons of the wire. So the total force acting on the wire, which is given by VIL sine theta, is the total force acting on each and every delocalized electron. Those are in motion that causes the current flow. So that's the force acting on the uh, current carrying wire. So we can derive this equation for the force acting on one charged particle. So we know that the current flow I is equal to 
NaEV, the transport equation, what you learned in electricity in unit 2. So substitute this I here. This is the total force acting on the wire. V, instead of I, I can say NaEV, V is the drift speed of the free electron. L, this L I wrote it, sine theta. So this I can say BEV, BEV, sine theta into NAL. So A is the area of cross section of the wire, L is the length of the wire inside the magnetic field. So N is the charge carrier density, number of free electrons per unit volume. So A into L, A into L is the length of the, the volume of the wire inside the magnetic field. N is the charge carrier density. So NAL is the total number of free electrons in the wire. So that is BEV sine theta into N, where N equal NAL. N is the number of free electrons per unit volume. AL is the volume inside the magnetic field. So this is the total number of free electrons inside the magnetic field. So the total number of free electrons, those are in magnetic field, is L. So the total force acting on the wire due to n number of moving particles, charged particle, is given by F. So force per unit charge, or force per unit particle, particle, equal F over N, divide this by N. So if you divide F by N, you will get PEV sine theta, where theta is the angle between direction of velocity and the direction of magnetic field. So this is the equation for force on acting on a moving charged particle in magnetic field, where theta is the angle between the direction of velocity and the direction of the magnetic field. So here E stands for electronic charge, charge of an electron. So the general equation F equal B Q V, we are used the charge sine theta. Okay, we'll consider the magnetic field is directed into the page or into the board. And when a positively charged particle enters into magnetic field, what will happen? When it enters into magnetic field, positively charged particle, so the direction of the current flow due to the motion of the charged particle will be along the direction of velocity. So there's magnetic, we can use Fleming's left hand rule to find the direction of force acting on the moving charged particle in magnetic field. So the magnetic field is into the board the velocity is towards right, so positively charged particle, so current flow also towards right. The force will be perpendicular to the direction of velocity, so the particle will turn upwards. When it turns upwards, the velocity along that way, so magnetic field into the board, velocity this way, force again, it is the perpendicular to the direction of velocity. So what will happen? The particle will move on a circular path because direction of the force inside the magnetic field will always act perpendicular to the direction of velocity. So that question several times they ask, explain why a moving charge particle when it enters into magnetic field in right angle to the field line, it moves on circular path or what will be its motion. So there are first you should say, according to Fleming's left hand rule, the direction of the force acting on the charged particle inside the magnetic field is always perpendicular to the direction of its velocity. Therefore, this magnetic force will act as the centripetal force. So the particle will move on a circular path. Same way, if a negatively charged particle enters into magnetic field, what will happen? So negatively charged particle means the direction of current flow will be opposite the direction of motion. Magnetic field into the board, current flow is opposite the direction of motion, that means towards left, force will be downwards. Same as here, force 
always acts perpendicular to the direction of velocity so it will move in this direction here also the the force will be always right angle to the direction of velocity if a neutral particle enters into magnetic field what will happen neutral particle has no charge so no force it will move on a straight line without any deflection it will move on a straight line okay so the direction of velocity and the direction of magnetic field are perpendicular to each other so the magnetic force which is given by f equal bqv sin theta theta will be equal to 90 degree so f equal b q v so this force will act as the centripetal force for the circular motion of the particle that's the reason always perpendicular to the direction of velocity means it will be centripetal force you learn that in uh, circular motion so the particle will move on a circular path and this will become the centripetal force centripetal force is given by mv squared over r okay from this we can get an equation for the radius of circular motion so v v squared so here one v will get cancelled so it will become v Q is equal to mv over r. So r is equal to mv over bq. That is p over bq. This equation they can ask to derive. Already I derived it in the particle physics notes also. Uh, particle physics lesson also. This equation you should be able to derive it. Okay, we can find or uh, we can get an equation for time period of circular motion so i'll continue with this equation r is equal to mv over bq so i can cross multiply b q r equal m we know that b equal r omega so i want to get e uh, expression or equation for time period so i cross multiply b q r equal m into b v equal r omega omega equal 2 pi over t so this i can write m r times 2 pi over t so here you can see r and r will get cancelled so r and r will get cancelled v q equal m times 2 pi over t so t equal 2 pi m over v q that means the time taken to complete one full circular orbit is independent of the speed of the particle also it's independent of radius of the particle that's the reason it's used in cyclotron already I explained that in my particle physics lesson so careful here in this equation r equal mv over bq so r equal p over bq or mv over bq whatever we say the v the v is the velocity which is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field where v is the velocity of the particle which is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field that's a very important so what will happen if the particle enters into magnetic field not right angle to the field and some other angle what will happen to the motion we'll analyze it now okay so here we'll analyze what will happen when it enters into magnetic field at some other angle so the velocity is v this makes an angle theta so this velocity has two components v cos theta along the direction of field lines v sin theta perpendicular to the field lines so when we consider those two components i'll draw it again the same field line so there will be two components one is perpendicular to the direction of field line v sin theta and there will be v 
cos theta along the field line. So due to the velocity which is parallel to the field line, there won't be any force. You know, according to Fleming's left hand rule, the direction of current flow should be perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. So only due to this component V sine theta, it will move on a circular path. So it will move on a circular path due to this force. So if you use Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic field, this direction, it's a positively charged particle. So the current flow is upwards when it enters into magnetic field. So the magnetic force will be into the page. So if into the page means it's entering, so it's going to move on a circular path like this into the page. So it will move on a circular path like this. So when it moves on a circular path, at the same time, this component of velocity is still there without any change because there is no force towards right. So particle which is moving on circular path due to the vertical component of force, also it has a velocity parallel to the field line. In overall what will happen, the particle will move on a helical path. It will move on a helical path. So the positively charged particle will move like this on a helical path. So the push to the right is due to V cos theta. The circular motion, all the equation related to circular motion, for example, the radius of this circular turns of the helical path are equal. MV over VQ, the V is the vertical common V sine theta over VQ. So based on this idea, there was a question in the exam paper uh, that is uh, January 2014, January 2014, question number 17, I'll discuss it now. Okay, so January 2014, WPH04, question number 70, this diagram is given. An electron traveling at 18 to 10 to the power 6 meter per second velocity uh, enters a uniform magnetic field at an angle of 70 degree to the field line. So 70 degree to the field lines. Uh, the electron moves in a helical path as shown in the diagram. A part, first part, calculate the compound of the electron's initial velocity that is perpendicular to the magnetic field. A part, second part, calculate the compound of the electron's initial velocity that is parallel to the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so those are nothing. Uh, first two, two parts. So A part, first part, that is which is perpendicular, uh, perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field so that we can say uh, velocity is given 18 to 10 to the power 6. So I can say velocity which is perpendicular or we can say VV vertical that is uh, 18 to 10 to the power 6 sine 70. So that is 7.52 10 to the power 6 meter per second. Second part, the compound which is parallel to the um, magnetic field, so I can say horizontal compound, that is 18 to 10 to the power 6 cos 70. That will be 2.74 10 to the power 6 meter per second. Okay, next part. That is the third part of A part. Explain why electron moves in the helical path. So that I already explained. You can say the compound of velocity perpendicular to the field line. Due to the compound of velocity perpendicular to the field line, the particle will move on circular path according to Fleming's left hand rule. Due to the horizontal compound of velocity, the particle will be dragged towards right. That velocity will remain constant because there is no force in horizontal direction. Okay, B part 
first part show that the radius of the loop of the helical path is about 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. So this radius of the loop. So there I told that already V R equal mv over V Q is the general equation. When we consider V, that's a compound of the velocity perpendicular to the field lines. So mass of the electron is given 9.11 10 to the power minus 31. The perpendicular component that is 7.52 10 to the power 6 and magnetic field strength is given 0 0.015 it will charge 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 so that will be 2.85 10 to the power minus 3 meters Okay, the second part of B part, calculate the time taken for electron to complete one loop so that we can find like this, you know, the time taken to complete one full loop is equal to the speed V equal to 2 pi R over T where V is the velocity perpendicular to the direction of uh, magnetic field. So that causes a circular motion. So T is equal to 2 pi R over and uh, we, we know the radius of the uh, circular path already we found it that is uh, we found it as uh, 2.84 10 to the power 10 to the power minus 3 2.85 sorry 2.85 10 to the power minus 3 over the velocity the component of velocity perpendicular to the direction of uh, magnetic field that we found it as uh, 7.52 I think 7.52 10 to the power minus sorry 10 to the power 6 seconds solid you will get the answer t equal the velocity which is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field we should consider 2.38 10 to the power minus 9 seconds. So, third part of part B, calculate the distance between two adjacent loops in the helical path. So, this distance, distance between two adjacent loops, this helical path. Okay, so that is due to the horizontal component of velocity. The horizontal component of velocity pulls it. So when it completes one full loop, when it completes one full orbit, it will be pulled towards right. So that distance I can say V is equal to horizontal component of velocity into time period. So horizontal component of velocity we already found it. Okay, so the last part of the question, uh, describe how the path would be different if the electron entered the magnetic field at an angle less than 70 degree. So when it enters at an angle less than 70 degree means what will happen? The vertical component of the velocity will decrease. So vertical component of the velocity decreases means the radius of the each loop will decrease because radius of the each loop is given by R equal MVV over BQ. So when the angle decreases, the vertical component will decrease, so radius of the loop will decrease. At the same time what will happen, the horizontal component of velocity will increase and no change in the time period because time period does not depend on it. So the time period is the same, so there is no change, I already told that t equal 2 pi m over v q when you consider that it does not depend on the speed or anything. So the time period to complete one full circular path will remain the same, no change, but the horizontal compound will increase, so the distance between the adjacent loop will increase. So in overall, the final answer, we can say when the angle becomes less than 70 degree, the radius of each loop of the helical path will become smaller and the distance between adjacent loop will increase. Okay, so when a charged particle moves in magnetic field, uh, 
uh, if it passes through a medium in magnetic field, what will happen? So when a charge, say for example, the application I already explained in particle physics, in uh, particle detectors, for example, bubble chamber, when a charge particle moves in magnetic field through a medium due to continuous collision with the part uh, atoms or particles of the medium, the charge particle will lose its kinetic energy. So its speed will decrease. When the speed decreases, I call it R equal mv over vq. When the speed decreases, the charge particle will move on an inward spiral path. Okay, so charge particle move on an inward spiral path in magnetic field and it passes through a medium because the speed decreases, so R will decrease. So a track of a charged particle in magnetic field is given and it says the direction of the magnetic field is out of the board. So the direction of the magnetic field is out of the board, out of the page. So they can ask to find the uh, type of charge carried by this particle, which direction it's moving not given, it's passing through a medium they are saying. So it's passing through a medium in magnetic field, the track is given. What's the type of charge it carries? Okay, how to find it? So first we should identify which direction is it moving. Is it moving from x to y? So I can name it x to y or y to x we can identify. Since it's moving in a medium due to continuous collision with the atoms of the medium, it will lose kinetic energy and the radius of the path will decrease. So here the radius is large and looks almost straight like the curvature is increasing, so radius is decreasing. That means it's moving from x to y. So the direction of motion we identify is moving from x to y. The magnetic field is out of the page. So what's the direction of the magnetic force? You know that when a charged particle moves in magnetic field, it will move on part of a circle. So the force will be towards the center of the circular path. Center of the circular path means it should be towards the uh, into from the curved path it should be towards the center. So if I consider something a point here, the magnetic force should be this direction. So I know the direction of the magnetic force. I know the direction of the magnetic field. So magnetic force uh, this way, magnetic field out of the page. The current flow due to the motion of charged particles is this direction. So current flow this direction means the direction of the current is this direction. Particles moving from x to y, we already know that due to the reduction in the radius of the orbit. Current flow is opposite to the direction of motion. Motion is from x to y but the current is opposite direction. That means it is a negatively charged particle. So the track is due to a negatively charged particle. Okay, so next topic is Hall voltage or Hall probe, the application of Hall voltage. Uh, when a metal piece or metal slab or semiconductor slab is kept in magnetic field, imagine the magnetic field is directed into the page in whole region everywhere. Magnetic field is directed into the page and the metal uh, slab is carrying a current from left to right. What will happen? When the current flows from left to right means electrons are moving in opposite direction and the moving electrons will experience magnetic force as we learned already, motion of charged particle in magnetic field. So when the electrons are moving from right to left, there is current flow from left to right. So the electrons will experience magnetic force if you call BQV sine theta. What will be the direction of the magnetic force? Use Fleming's left hand hold. Magnetic field is into the board. The current flow is towards right, so the electrons will experience force upward direction. So the electrons will be shifted, when they are moving, the electrons will be shifted to upper end. This end will become negatively charged and this end will become positively charged. So not all the electrons will be shifted, only certain electrons will be shifted, I'll let you know why. So now there will be opposite type of charges on the opposite sides of the uh, rectangular metal piece or rectangular semiconductor piece. So there will be potential difference across the opposite ends due to this opposite type of charges uh, exist. So there will be voltage developed across opposite sides of the metal. That voltage is called Hall voltage. 
we can get an expression for the hall voltage. Okay, so the electrons are shifted up upwards, and bottom part will become positively charged. Now, when you think about an electron inside, I told not all electrons shifted. When I think about an electron here, which is in already motion, it will experience two different forces. So, if I draw the electron separately here, that electron will have an upwards magnetic force F equal V E V. V is the drift speed of the electron, the speed at which the electron is moving, the drift speed that causes the current flow. And you know there is separated charges, so there will be uniform electric field inside the metal. So the, the electric field which is developed due to separation of the charges, I can call it as E. So due to this uh, electric field developed, there will be force, that is electrostatic force, F equal QE, that I call EE. Okay, so when the electrons have shifted towards upper edge, the electric field strength is developed and at an instant, the magnetic force will become equal to electrostatic force. So when the magnetic force balances electrostatic force, other electrons will not be shifted upward direction. So when you are keeping the current flow constant, there will be certain number of electrons shifted upwards that will form a uniform constant electric field strength inside. Due to the electric field strength, there will be electrostatic force on other electrons, those who have not shifted. So that is F equal QE and there is a magnetic force F equal BEV. So when the current is maintained constant, at an instant, the both forces, magnetic force and the electrostatic force acting on an electron will be balanced. So that will become BEV will become equal to EE. E and E will get cancelled. So that will become E is equal to the electric field strength. E will be equal to BVO, BV. Okay. But we know that electric field strength is equal to E equal V over D. So there is a uniform electric field inside the metal rectangular slab. So the potential difference created due to separation of these two charges is called Hall voltage. So E is equal to Hall voltage VH over E equal V over D. So VH over, that is a voltage developed due to separation of charges, VH over the distance between the opposite sides is D is equal to V V. So V H is equal to V V D where V is the drift speed of the electron. So we have to eliminate that. We know the current flow passing through the slab. So we know transport equation I equal N A E V. So V is equal to I over N A E substitute there. The whole voltage is given by V in so V I can substitute I over N A E into D. But I know that A is the area of cross section which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow. This area, this is A. That area is given as the thickness T into height D. Okay, so this is V I D over N instead of A, you can substitute T D into E. So D and E will get cancelled. So the V I over N T E. For a given material, N is constant, T is constant, E is constant. For a given metal piece or rectangular slab, N T E is constant, I is constant. If you keep current flow in it constant, V equal I over N E T into V. So if I keep the current constant on the metal, N E T also constant, so I can say V proportional to V. So by using, by measuring the whole voltage, 
by measuring the Hall voltage, you can measure the magnetic field strength. So this is called Hall probe. This is the apparatus we use to measure the Hall, the magnetic field strength in a region. So you can calibrate it. Anyway, not in your syllabus. Calibration. Calibration means by using a known value, you scale a device. So if I calibrate it by measuring the Hall voltage, we will be able to measure the magnetic field strength in a region by using Hall probe. So Hall probe actually measures the Hall voltage. By using the Hall voltage, we can measure the magnetic field strength. I better know the derivation because they might ask this. Okay, so next topic is magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is the amount of magnetic field passing through an area. Magnetic flux is the amount of magnetic field passing through an area. So its unit is Weber or Tesla meter square. Tesla times meter square is the magnetic flux. Okay, what's the equation? How do we define? Actual definition is not in your syllabus. So magnetic flux is given by if there's an area A, so imagine there's an area A, through that a magnetic field is passing, the strength of the magnetic field is B and the angle between the normal to the surface of that area, the area is A, so the normal to the surface with that the magnetic field lines are making an angle theta. So magnetic flux is defined, not denoted by phi, is defined as B vector dot area. A. So here actual definition not in your syllabus is little bit maths. A means the new A means the vector. We put the area in vector. That means vector A means area into unit vector M. Unit vector M into A. What is this unit vector means that is perpendicular to the surface. So B dot unit vector which is perpendicular to the surface into A. So that will be B A cos theta. Those who are doing further maths would have learned cos product dot product in vectors. Actually the flux is defined based on dot product. Anyway you don't need much about it but later we need it when we are thinking about rotation of coil through 180 degree. There are changing flux we need this idea so here the magnetic flux linkage with the solenoid or coil which has n number of turns is given by phi equal b a cos theta where theta is the angle between normal to the surface and the field lines b a cos theta times n. So that means b a n cos theta that's the magnetic flux linkage with n number of turns of solenoid or coil. Okay, so here how to find the change in magnetic flux linkage or magnetic field linkage means amount of magnetic field coupling with something else. So that's called magnetic flux linkage. So here uh, initially the magnetic flux is phi equal B A if it has n number of turns B A N because field lines are passing through the coil of n number of turns perpendicular to the plane of the coil. So when it rotates through 90 degree. When it rotates through 90 degree, what will happen? The plane of the coil will become parallel to the field line. So the coil will become, now here the coil is like this, coil will become like this. Field lines also into the board. So the direction of the field lines will be parallel to the plane of the coil. So flux linkage will be equal to zero. I can call this is an initial, this is final, equal to zero. So change in flux, delta phi is equal to the numerical value this minus this this is v a m okay so you must know this one second one when it rotates through 180 degree from the initial position like one eighty degree what happened now I already told actual flux means the dot product 
don't worry about it too much vectors so here i can say the field lines is into the board the normal to the plane is also directed into the board so the change in flux we say the it has rotated through 180 degree means we can say v a m that is the initial minus minus v a m because the direction is changing and here remember that 2 v a m is the change in flux when a coil rotates through 180 degree if you don't understand the dot product don't worry about it but remember that when a coil rotates through 180 degree the change in flux will be 2 times v a m <coughs> Okay, so next is about electromagnetic induction. So Faraday's law, what Faraday's law says that the magnitude of the induced EMS, so whenever there's a change in flux, there will be rate of change of flux, right? So Faraday's law says the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to rate of change of flux linkage, you can say, or magnitude of the induced EMF is equal to rate of change of flux linkage. Either way, you can say the Faraday's law, the magnitude of the induced EMF is equal to rate of change of flux linkage or magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to rate of change of flux linkage. Either way, you can say. So according to Faraday's law, the induced EMF is given by rate of change of flux linkage d phi over dt there will be minus i i'll come to that point regarding lenses law when we include there will be minus i just i'll uh, tell first about actual idea of the uh, faraday's law induce emf equal to rate of change of flux linkage so if you have a graph of variation of phi with respect to time say for example if there's a graph This is the flux linkage, how it is varying with time. So, and if they give the variation of flux with time as a sine curve, and in case if they ask to find the uh, induced EMF at an instant, say for example, at this particular instant, what's the induced EMF? Only thing, you need to draw a tangent to the graph at that point. You need to draw a tangent to the graph at that point and find the gradient of the tangent. That will give the induced EMF at that instant at that particular time the induced EMF will be given by the gradient of the tangent drawn at that particular point anyway but normally in your calculation that type of question also came in one uh, I can't remember the year I'll do that question after this uh, so okay so uh, that's uh, we can write this one here change in flux over time taken also we can write del phi over del t change in flux over time taken but it gives only an average value that is phi 2 minus phi 1 over time taken t actually this will give the average induced emf but this one if you draw a tangent to the graph at an instant that will give the instantaneous induced emf if you find if you have two different values of flux and divide by time that will give the average induced EMF. Okay, so imagine a rectangular coil which has surface area A and number of turns N, number of turns N and surface area A is rotating as shown in the diagram at constant angular speed omega. So I can say omega equal theta over T. Imagine initially the field lines are perpendicular to the surface or plane of the coil initially it was like that we'll, for simplicity we will take like that initially the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the uh, plane of the coil or magnetic field lines are along the normal drawn from the plane of the coil so theta will be zero initially it's rotating at constant angular speed omega so later at time t it makes an angle theta means angular speed equal theta over t at this instant the magnetic flux linkage with the coil is equal to phi equal v a n v actually the, we need to consider the perpendicular comment so v cos theta into a into n 
b cos theta into a into x so that I can say b a n cos theta but theta is equal to omega t cross multiply so phi is equal to b a n cos omega t so for a given constant uniform magnetic field strength if the area of the uh, rectangular coil is constant n is constant constant angular speed so phi is varying with time according to a cosine graph so there are the variation of phi variation of phi with time is going to be a cosine graph when t equals 0 it will be maximum so it's a cosine graph so if they give a graph on a grid like this and ask to find the induced emf at a particular instant you need to draw i already explained that you need to draw a tangent to the graph and find the induced emf if you want to find the maximum induced emf they ask you need to keep a ruler like a tangent and find the greatest value of tangent say for example here the gradient of the tangent is equal to zero because it's horizontal so like that keep it like a tangent where the ruler becomes more and more vertical draw a tangent at that point and find the gradient that will be the highest gradient that will be the highest induced emf there's a question like this in the past paper Okay, next thing is about lenses law. What lenses law says? It says that you know when there is induced EMF and if we provide a closed path, there will be induced current. So the lenses law says that the direction of the induced current is such that to oppose the change in magnetic flux linkage or the direction of the induced current is such that to oppose the change in magnetic flux. So when I include the lenses law in Faraday's law, so induced EMF equal d phi by dt is the Faraday's law, rate of change of flux linkage. But if I consider the uh, lenses law also, that means the induced EMF will oppose the change in flux, so that is given in mathematically minus sign. So we say induce EMF equal minus d phi by dt. This minus sign indicates the lenses law. What it means, the direction of the induced current is such that to oppose the change in magnetic flux. That's the meaning of uh, the minus sign in that equation. Okay, so when a coil rotates in uniform magnetic field, what will be the induced EMF? Uh, they won't ask, but you know, uh, those who are interested for them, I'll do include the lenses law. So, you know the magnetic flux, I derived it, phi equal b a and cos theta. So, induced EMF will be minus d phi by dt. That will be minus d times b a n cos omega t over dt, differentiate it. Most of you know the calculus. So, B A N con co constant. So, minus B A N cos omega t if you differentiate minus omega sine omega t. So, it's going to be B A N omega sine omega t. This is the induced EMF. That's the reason always when a coil rotates, it produces AC voltage. That's the reason normal electrical generators, their output is an AC voltage. This is the reason. So this B and omega is constant for a given uh, coil when it rotates in magnetic field. So that we can say E naught. So I can say E equal E naught sine omega t. Where E naught is B A n omega okay so here we can analyze like this a coil is rotating at constant angular speed in magnetic field and induced emf is given by e equal e naught sine omega t not in your syllabus this equation but i use this equation to explain more clearly but finally i'll later i'll give you actually in your syllabus how do we answer certain questions like 
Uh, so here you can see when theta equals zero, when the magnetic that means when the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the field uh, plane of the coil, when the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the plane of the coil, at that moment the flux linkage is the maximum. You can see that on the diagram. When theta equals zero, the field lines will be perpendicular to the field uh, perpendicular to the plane of the coil. That means the field lines will be perpendicular because theta equals zero. That time the flux linkage is the maximum, but flux linkage is maximum when you substitute theta zero, induce EMF become equal to zero. That's the actual reason. But in your syllabus, how do we define how do we explain that? Uh, when the field lines are perpendicular to the plane of the coil, flux linkage is maximum, but when it rotates to a small angle, the coil will not cut the field lines, or we say when it rotates to a small angle from that position, the change in flux is negligible. That's the reason induced EMF zero we explained in a, uh, normally A level. Again, I'm explaining. Actual reason, when theta equals zero, the field lines will be perpendicular to the plane of the coil and it will have the maximum flux linkage. But at that moment, you can see that when you put theta zero, induce the energy zero. So it's a confusion for the students. They ask, the flux linkage is maximum. How is it possible to get zero induced EMF? Actual explanation is this one, but normally how do we explain? In uh, A level, when the flux linkage is maximum, field lines are falling perpendicular to the plane of the coil. When the coil rotates to smaller angle, the change in flux is negligible. That's the reason induced EMF is zero. Change in flux is negligible. That's the reason induced EMF zero. Or we can say when the coil rotates through small angle, the coil will not cut the field lines. Therefore, induced EMF is zero. The other situation, when the coil becomes parallel to the field line, that means when the theta becomes 90 degree, you can say when theta equal 90 degree, Induce EMF will be E0 sine 90, that will be the maximum E0. So, induce EMF will be maximum when the field lines are parallel to the plane of the coil. Parallel to the plane of the coil means flux linkage is zero. When the flux linkage with the coil is zero, induce EMF is the maximum. So, actual explanation is mathematics, but A level we don't use the mathematics. How do we explain that? When the field lines are parallel to the plane of the coil and the, when the coil rotates through small angle, the coil will cut the field lines heavily. Or you can say when the field lines are parallel to the plane of the coil and the, when, when, when the coil rotates through small angle, change in flux is the maximum, so induced EMF is maximum. That's the way we explain it A level. But actual explanation is mathematics. Don't write this in the exam because that won't be in the marks in. But for the students, those who are curious to understand why that is like that, I explain this part. Okay, so when a metal wire moves in magnetic field, there will be induced EMF. What's the reason for induced EMF? So we can say like this, uh, when I draw the metal wire like little wider, what happens when the metal wire moves relative to magnetic field, the free electrons in the metal wire also moving. So free electrons are moving relative to magnetic field towards right. So relative to magnetic field, there is current flow towards left because electrons are negatively charged. They are inside the metal wire. They are moving towards this direction relative to magnetic field. So there will be current flow relative to magnetic field opposite direction. So the electrons, the free electrons are going to experience magnetic force according to Fleming's left hand rule. If I use magnetic field is into the board, there is current flow to the left. So the electrons, the delocalized electrons of the metal wire will experience force downwards. So they will be shifted towards down and this end will become negatively charged. So this end will become positively charged. 
So due to this opposite type of charges or the opposite ends, there will be electric field developed inside the metal wire. Also, there will be induced voltage due to the, these separated charges. So the origin of the induced EMF is this one. So again, when the metal wire moves, the free electrons or the delocalized electrons are moving relative to magnetic field. So relative to magnetic field, there is current flow. Due to the current flow, the delocalized electrons of the wire will experience magnetic force. And according to Fleming's left hand rule, they will experience magnetic force downwards and they will be shifted to the lower end of the rod. Upper end will become positively charged. Due to these separated charges, there will be potential difference across the end. That is called induced voltage. That is the induced voltage. So I'm going to get an expression or the equation for induced voltage. Right, we'll say like this. It's moving at constant speed V. The Y is moving towards right at constant speed V. That means the delocalized electrons are moving towards right at constant speed V. The magnetic force acting on an electron inside is given by Fm equal B E V. So I told already there is uh, electric field will be developed inside the metal due to this opposite type of charges at the opposite ends. So the electron will experience two forces. One is the magnetic force that is downward direction, Fm. And the electric field lines will be from positive to negative. So the electric field lines will be downwards. Since it's an electron, it will experience electrostatic force opposite the direction of field line that will be upward direction so there will be electrostatic force upward direction also so when the rod is moved at constant speed these two forces will be balanced so the magnetic force is given by v e v the electrostatic force is given by f e equal e e e e e is the charge of an electron capital e is the uh, electric field strength developed inside the rod if I say the length of the wire or rod is L, I can say E equal the potential difference developed. That is the induced voltage across the ends over length of the rod. So Fe equal E times V over L. So at an instant, if the rod is moving at constant speed, these two forces will balance at equilibrium. So when the forces become balance the induced EMF also will become stable. So Fe I can say E V is the potential difference developed across the ends over L equal to magnetic force V E V. So this V is the speed careful this is the speed of the rod at which it's moving. This is the induced voltage. E and E will get cancelled so induced voltage will be equal to V L V this is the induced voltage, this is the speed at which the rod is moving. So here I did not use, I am not using the Faraday's law. Without using Faraday's law, based on magnetic force and the condition for equilibrium between the electrostatic force and the magnetic force, I derived the equation for induced voltage on a moving metal wire. Induce EMF one, I can say epsilon doesn't matter. Normally we use epsilon for induced voltage, so here it will become epsilon induce EMF epsilon. Normally we use for more induced voltages epsilon, so I use the epsilon. Okay, the same equation what I derived, I can derive again by using. Uh, Faraday's law. So I'll say it's moving at constant speed v at t equal 0. It's here. Later at time t, it has come to this position. The distance moved, let it be x. So I can say the area swept by the area swept by the rod when it's moved through the magnetic field is equal to the length of the rod L into x.
So the magnetic flux linkage or the magnetic amount of magnetic flux swept by the rod during its motion at time t is equal to phi equal b a. So this is a change in area or area swept. So this is the magnetic field strength b into x of a I can put Lx. According to Faraday's law, induced EMF is given by change in flux over time taken. So this change in flux occurs during time t. So B L X over T, this I can write B L times X over T. So X over T means distance moved over time taken is the speed. So B L V. So this derivation gives the same equation, but here I use the Faraday's law. But earlier I did not use the Faraday's law. Okay, so I am going to derive an equation for induced EMF when a metal rod rotates at constant angular speed in magnetic field. Okay, so it's rotating at constant angular speed omega. So the time taken to complete one full orbit, omega equal 2 pi over t. So t equal 2 pi over omega. When it completes one full circular path, the area it swept, I can call delta A or A equal pi L squared, pi R squared. So here pi L squared, L is the length of the wire. So change in magnetic flux or amount of magnetic flux swept by the rod or wire when it completes one full a, uh, circular path is equal to phi equal B A. That is B into pi into B L squared, B into A, so B into A pi L squared. So induced EMF is given by <coughs> change in flux over time taken. We consider one full circular path, so during one full circular path the change in flux is pi times B L squared and the time taken T is one period that is 2 pi over omega. So it's going to be pi and pi will get cancelled b l squared omega over 2 if you know the speed of this end every point will have different speeds because length is changing v equal r omega but if you know the speed of the end of the rod is v then v is equal to the speed v is equal to l omega so it's of omega we can put v over l so induced emf will be b l squared over 2 into it's of omega we can substitute v over l so that will be b l v by 2 v is the speed of the end of the or the free end of the wire Okay, so uh, applications of Lenz's law. First, mainly we can use the Lenz's law to find the direction of the induced EMF or direction of the induced current. Direction of the induced EMF means which end uh, positive, which end is negative for the induced voltage. Say for example, we consider example, there's a solenoid like this. Right, it's connected to a galvanometer a bar magnet, this is north pole, is moved this direction. So, you know, the magnetic field produced by a bar magnet is non-uniform. So, when you move it towards it, the magnetic field lines will pass through the solenoid. There will be change in magnetic flux linkage with the solenoid. Rate of change of flux linkage will induce EMF. What will be the direction of the induced EMF? Which end of the, uh, when it moves towards it, which end of the solenoid will become positive and which end will become negative? Or if I connect, uh, put it that in a complete circuit, which direction will the current flow? We can find it by using Lenz's law. So when the bar magnet moves towards it, the north pole is closer to the left end of the solenoid. I can call this left end X. So the north pole is closer to x. So what happens when it moves? There will be induced voltage. 
and there will be induced current due to complete circuit. Even if there is no induced current and we need to find the induced e, direction of induced EMF means we can assume the ends are connected. We assume the ends are connected with a uh, galvanometer or connected with a complete circuit that forms a current. So from that current we can find the direction of the induced EMF. Okay. Uh, when the north pole of the bar magnet moves towards the X, according to Lenz's law, what it says, the direction of the induced current is such that to oppose the change in magnetic flux linkage, opposes the action causing it. Some books they say that way also. That means the direction of the induced current should oppose the motion of the magnet towards it. So you know there will be induced current due to induced EMF. That current should oppose the motion of the magnet means we already learned that when current is created or when there is current flow in a solenoid, the magnetic field produced around the solenoid will be same as the magnetic field produced by a bar magnet. So one end of the solenoid should become north pole, one end should become south pole. So the north pole of the bar magnet should be opposed by the induced current means I call Lenz's law the induced current should oppose the motion of the bar magnet means the left end of the solenoid should become north then only north can repel the north the induced current should produce the end x north so end a y will become south due to the induced current now I can find the direction of the current by using right hand grip rule for poles. I know the induced current which is flowing in the solenoid will make left and north means I call right hand grip rule for poles. My thumb should point to the end X. So the current flow on this solid line should be upward direction. So I know the direction of the current flow here this way. That means the current will flow this way, this way and this way. That means even if I don't have a galvanometer, I know that this end will become positively charged or this end will become positive terminal. Even if this is not there, I can say this will become positive, this will become negative for the induced EMF. Okay, we can use the Lenz's law here also. A metal wire or rod is moving in magnetic field towards right. We already know that there will be induced EMF which is given by E equal BLV. I derived it already. So now we need to find which end of the rod will become positive. You know if there is an induced voltage one end should become positive like a cell. One end should become positive other one end should become negative. So which end will become positive which end will become negative. Or if I connect these ends of the rod in a complete circuit which direction will the current flow I need to find it here I can use Lenz's law okay so you know that the rod is or the wire is moving towards right imagine I connect this rod in a complete circuit so actually I am not connecting it but imagine this rod is connected in a complete circuit something like this okay so when there is current flow what should happen the current flow should oppose the motion so the current flow, the Lenz's law says, oppose the change in flux or opposes the action. Different way the different book says. So the induced current should oppose the motion of the rod. That means the induced current should produce a force on the rod towards left. So the induced current, the rod is moving towards right. But the induced current should provide a force on the rod towards left. Now I can say there is induced current which is flowing on the wire PQ in magnetic field and that current is providing force towards left. Why should towards left? To oppose the motion. I got Lenz's law. Now I can use the Fleming's left hand rule. If I use the Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic field is equal to the board. Force is towards left means the induced current should flow on the rod from Q to P. The induced current should flow from Q to P. So induced current should flow from Q to P means it will come out of end P. The current will flow in the external circuit like this. It will come out of the P 
and flow to the tube. So, in a battery or in a cell, you know that when you have a battery or cell, the current flows out of the positive terminal. It flows out of the positive terminal. So, here current will, this is the battery. PQ is the, we can say, induced battery. So, the current comes out of P means the NP will become positively charged. NQ will become negative terminal or NP will become positive terminal and NQ will become negative terminal during induced EMF. <coughs> okay, so another example here the solenoid is kept in external magnetic field B and the external magnetic field is decreasing. The external magnetic field B which is decreasing so that means when it decreases, the flux linkage with the solenoid will change and there will be induced voltage due to rate of change of flux linkage. So the induced voltage, which end will become positive, which end will become negative across the solenoid. Okay, so there I can imagine the ends are connected to a complete circuit, something like this. And due to change in magnetic flux or reduction in the decrease in the external magnetic field, there is induced EMF that causes a current flow. So, Lenz's law says the direction of the induced current should oppose the change in flux. Change in flux is happening in the external magnetic field which is decreasing. The external magnetic field is decreasing. That should be opposed by the induced current. So, what induced current will do? The induced current will try to increase the external magnetic field because induced current is uh, sorry the external magnetic field is decreasing that should be opposed by the induced current according to Lenz's law so the induced current will try to produce magnetic field towards right because it will oppose the decrease in external magnetic field so the induced current will produce magnetic field towards right means if I draw again for the induced current same solenoid So the same solenoid, the induced current will produce magnetic field towards right to oppose the decrease in external magnetic field. So this is the direction of the magnetic field produced by the induced current. So that means the induced current is producing magnetic field towards right means the magnetic field produced by the induced current is coming out of end Y. Through the end Y, the induced the magnetic field due to induced current is coming out. That means the induced current will make the end Y north pole. End X will be south pole due to the induced current. So end Y becomes north pole means now use the right hand grip pull for poles. I should keep my hands like this because thumb should indicate the north pole. The finger should indicate the direction of current flow means the current flow should be this direction. So that means current will flow this direction. That means again the end Y. So I just connected this one. So I know the direction of the current coming out of the solenoid. That is going to be a battery which is created due to induction. Now I know this end will become positive. This end will become negative for this uh, induced EMF. The end Y will become positive and X will become negative. <clears throat> okay, so another question or application related to Lenz's law and induced EMF. So, P and Q are two identical metal rings connected to same length of light strings and they are oscillating with same amplitude initially. The oscillation has the same amplitude. Here in figure 1, the uh, Ring is passing through a magnetic field in a smaller region where the field strength is B is passing through that. Here the ring Q is oscillating completely inside identical magnetic field. So the strength is the same. Only thing here is applied through larger region and the ring Q is completely oscillating. Here the ring Q is passing through the magnetic field strength. Which of these two, if we ignore the drag force, AR resistance, which 
ring P or Q will oscillate for a longer time? It could be a question. Okay, so the answer, which of these two will oscillate for a longer time? The answer should be like this. When the ring Q passes through the magnetic field, it's always inside the same magnetic field which is uniform. This is also uniform. But since it's completely inside the magnetic field and oscillating, the flux linkage with the ring is not changing. It is the same during its oscillation, throughout the oscillation. Since the magnetic flux is the same, the change in flux is zero, that means no induced EMF, so no induced current. Lenz's law is not applicable because no induced current. But here, figure one, when the ring enters into the magnetic field, if I draw this situation larger, so when the ring enters into the magnetic field, initially the ring will be like this, Later, when it moves towards right, the ring will become like this. Like that, the area of the ring which is passing inside the or crossing through the magnetic field is changing. So, there is a change in flux linkage when the ring enters into the magnetic field and when the ring leaves the magnetic field, that time also there will be change in magnetic flux. So, during it enters and when it leaves, there is change in magnetic flux linkage means according to Faraday's law, there will be induced voltage. Since the metal ring forms a complete circuit loop, there will be induced current. According to Lenz's law, the induced current will oppose the motion, braking system, something like that. The induced current will oppose the motion. So when it enters, it will experience a magnetic force opposite to the motion means towards left. When it leaves, again it will experience magnetic force to the left. When it enters from right side to left side, it will experience magnetic force towards right. Like that, whenever the ring enters into the magnetic field and when it leaves the magnetic field, it is going to experience opposing force due to Lenz's law. So, the figure 1 will slow down quickly and it will stop quickly. But this one will oscillate for longer time. Okay, so this is another application of <coughs> Lenz's law, such that like a braking system. So question number uh, 15, B part, but I'll start with the beginning. Uh, October 2021, uh, WPH 101. Right, so here, uh, the question says about a carriage on a roller coaster ride travels along a horizontal track towards a vertical tower as shown. So first part, A part, first part is something related to conservation of energy, uh, sorry, change in momentum. So I am not doing it now. So the purpose of the question is part B about the roller coaster, how to slow down. Just before the carriage reaches the end of the ride, it slowed by an electromagnetic break. Powerful magnets are attached to the track. An aluminium fin is attached to the carriage. The fin moves through a narrow gap between the magnets. Explain why the fin will leave the gap with much lower speed than it ended. So this type of question then and there came about breaking by using Lenz's law. So there, you know, aluminium is a non-magnetic material, so it won't be attracted by the magnetic field. But what happens when a metal plate made of aluminium, they call fin, when it passes through the magnetic field, it will cut the field lines, or you can say the magnetic flux linkage with the fin or aluminium plate will change, first point. According to Faraday's law, the, due to the rate of change of flux linkage, there will be induced voltage. Since the metal plate forms a complete circuit, there will be induced current. Three marks, you got it. Then you should say, according to Lenz's law, the direction of the induced current should oppose the change in magnetic flux, you can say, or the direction of the induced current 
will oppose the motion of the fin. Therefore, the fin will experience a force opposite to the direction of motion and it will slow down. This is the answer. The same answer appears most of the question related to Lenz's law which is used as a braking system. Again, I'll say when the fin or the metal plate passes through the magnetic field, the magnetic flux linkage with the fin will change. Due to rate of change of magnetic flux linkage, there will be induced EMF. Since the metal forms a complete circuit or complete path, there will be induced current. According to Lenz's law, the induced current will oppose the motion or oppose the change in magnetic flux or oppose the motion of the fin. Therefore, the fin will experience a force opposite to the direction of motion and it will decelerate. That's the answer you should give for most of the questions related to uh, braking system uh, based on the Lenz's law. Okay, so there could be a question like this. It's very often this question came several times. Why EMF is induced when a coil rotates in magnetic field? The same answer given several times. So first you should say when the coil rotates in magnetic field, the magnetic flux linkage with the coil will continuously vary. Due to rate of change of magnetic flux linkage, EMF will be induced. Then you should say, when the coil is, the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field lines, induced EMF will be zero since the change in flux linkage will be equal to zero. Sorry, change in magnetic flux link. I made a mistake, sorry again. When a coil rotates in magnetic field, the magnetic flux linkage with the coil will vary continuously. Therefore, there will be rate of change of flux linkage with the coil. When the magnetic field lines are parallel to the plane of the coil, the induced EMF will be maximum since change in magnetic flux linkage is maximum. When the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the plane of the coil, induced EMF will be equal to zero since change in magnetic flux linkage is equal to zero. That's the answer normally. They give it for this type of question. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the reason for induced EMF becomes uh, uh, fluctuating. That means that it becomes a AC signal. Okay, so next thing is about back EMF in electric motor. It's like this, when the uh, initial current will be very high, but later when the motor rotates at constant uh, angular speed or constant RPM, the current flow will decrease to a stable value. Why this happens? The reason is initially when the circuit is switched, when the motor is switched on, the coil will rotate at higher RPM. So there will be change in the coil is rotating in magnetic field is it the, there will be magnet in the magnetic field the coil is rotating so there will be induced voltage uh, across the coil so 
what happens according lenz's law this induced voltage will oppose the voltage applied from the external circuit so always finally when the rpm increases the induced voltage also will increase which is opposite to the direction of uh, applied voltage finally there will be a steady voltage and hence the current becomes lower later so actually when the circuit is switched on the coil will rotate initially at higher rate there will be rate of change of flux linkage and there will be induced emf according to lenz's law the induced emf will be in opposite to the emf uh, of the power supply uh, used in external circuit so the net emf will become lower so the current will decrease and become stable at uh, stable uh, amount of uh, rpm or rotation per minute that's the reason so when you have a current initially the current flow will be higher <coughs> with time so current will become higher then it will decrease and become constant Okay, next thing about area under the induced EMF against time graph. So normally, whenever coil rotates, the question is related to that type. Uh, coil rotates, there will be change in flux which causes induced EMF. So area under induced EMF time graph, what will it be? You know that induced EMF equal to rate of change of flux linkage, or we can see d phi by dt so area means you know emf into dt equal d phi so this is the area actually when you integrate on you will get but you don't have anything like that but this is area which is change in flux so area under the graph uh, of induced emf against time this graph indicates change in flux So when the induced EMF is maximum, I already told that the flux linkage will be equal to zero. I already told that with equations also I told that anyway. But when the induced EMF is maximum at that point, the field lines are parallel to the plane of the coil and the flux linkage equal to zero. When the induced EMF becomes zero. at that instant the field lines are perpendicular to the plane of the coil and the flux linkage is equal to maximum so change in flux linkage you can find phi say if the coil has n number of turns and area of, of cross section is a so i can say change in flux the area equal to change in flux when i consider this area the shaded area so change in flux that equal to b a n Minus zero. So if you find the area, if A is given, N is given, you can find the magnetic field strength. Uh, that type of question appeared uh, in the past paper. Uh, that is uh, October two thousand nineteen. Question number sixteen. Try October two thousand nineteen. Two thousand nineteen. Question number sixteen. Uh, the question is related to this one. <coughs> you can find the area by counting the number of boxes. What you learn in unit one or practical. What we do if the graph covers more than half of a square, we take it as one. Less than half, take it zero. Anyway, it's up to you. The way you find the area under the graph. Okay, so gradient of flux linkage against time graph. What will it be? You know that induced EMF is given as rate of change of flux linkage. This is 
flux against time graph. So rate of change of flux linkage is the gradient of the graph. So if you want to find the induced EMF at a point, the instantaneous EMF at a point, draw a tangent to the graph. Say if they ask the time is given maybe at this instant, what's the induced EMF? If that's the question, draw a tangent at that point and find the gradient that will be the induced EMF at that instant. So if you just find the change in flux over time taken, that will give the average induced EMF. So you can find the induced EMF at an instant by using a graph. If the graph is given, you can find the induced EMF at an instant by using a graph. How to find it? Draw a tangent at a point where you want to find the induced EMF. Draw a tangent and find the gradient of the tangent. If they ask to find the maximum induced EMF, you need to draw a tangent such that it has the highest radians for that. Keep a ruler like a tangent and here the tangent is, has a gradient zero. Keep a ruler like a tangent where your ruler becomes more and more vertical. At that point, draw the tangent and find the gradient of it. That will give the maximum induced EMF. <coughs> So question related to this graph appeared on January 2015, WPH 0401, question number 13, try this question, same way you will get it. Okay, so I have done all the topics in magnetic field related to Edexcel IAL unit 4 syllabus. I hope uh, you would have understood it. Uh, yeah, right. And I'll do uh, later some of the topics later unit 5 also mainly cosmology. Okay, bye.